Alrighty. Uh, it gives me a pleasure to invite our next speaker up. Uh, this speaker I erroneously last year described as being a dentist. He's in fact not a dentist. <laughs> uh, I would like to cordially invite Michael Maynard up to the stage, who's going to give us an awesome introduction to safe cracking. Uh, Michael last year won the picking competition at Osecon, and we gifted him. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, we gifted him as a as the winner with a ticket to the Dutch Open uh, tool, the basically the World Champs, effectively, uh, where you placed all the way to the semi-finals. Congratulations. Uh, cool. Uh, I would like to pass over to you. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks very much, eh? Now I'm going to try this in the lapel pocket. Can you guys hear me all right with that? How about that? Awesome. Okay, all right. Just let me know if you can't hear me, eh? Oh, right. Maybe I just stand like this the whole time. <laughs> Shall I try that? All right, so basic safe manipulation. Now, um, safe manipulation is not a difficult thing, and um, I just want to make a couple of comments about that before I begin. Um, thanks to these guys. Well, I've, I've already spoken uh, about thanking these guys for bringing me over here and pick pals for the sponsorship and all the rest of it. Um, nothing I'm going to say today is new, so this is all prior art type stuff, all right? Um, so you're very welcome to record this, photograph it, do what you like. We, we are not talking about complex new things. All right, so we're all clear on that. We're, we're cool. All right. Um, so my goals here are to, first of all, impart an understanding to you guys about how these safe locks work. So they're a fascinating beast, eh? they really are, and I love them because they're interesting, they're an example of really good design, they're, they're just a wonderful piece of equipment. But secondly, I want to kind of light the fire under a few folks here to get into really trying to understand them and, and learn how to manipulate them. So I, I, I understand that it's not for everybody, you know, it's not everybody's thing, but for some folks out there, it, it really is, and uh, it's going to be my pleasure really to, to introduce you guys to it, eh? So, um, the next thing to talk about here is that when we get into dealing with a safe lock, there's only really three things that we need to do, okay? First of all, we need a really thorough understanding of how the thing works, and about half of my presentation this afternoon is going to be about that. So we're going to talk about it in detail, we're going to demystify it, show you what it is and how it does its thing. Next thing we're going to do is talk about mastering just one Believe it or not, one physical skill. So when you're picking an ordinary pin lock, you know, five, six pins, whatever, um, there's actually quite a few things you've got to do. You've got to be tensioning it, and you've got to figure out the feedback from the pick, and you've got to work out what pick to use, all that sort of stuff. Believe it or not, folks, manipulating a lock is actually a little easier than that. And um, you've only really got to figure out these things called contact points. And um, we're going to talk more about the contact points shortly. But how do I get the little red dot here? OK. Um, there are these things called contact points on the cam. That would be that thing. You'll be hearing more about that shortly. You've got to master that skill. And thirdly, we've just got to, got to do some logic. We've got to do some thinking. So there's actually more thinking to manipulating a safe than there is learning physical skills. And uh, that probably runs contrary to everything you think you know. You know, you, you think, wow, these things are incredibly complex, they're incredibly high security. They're kind of not, you know. Um, and they're going to be incredibly difficult to, to learn how to get open. But it really is not true. The logic, the stuff that goes on up here, is actually the bulk of what you've got to figure out. So, let's get into it. Now, um, opening a safe lock, so a three-wheel mechanical lock, right, um, is a classic mechanical side channel attack. Can somebody really briefly tell me what a side channel attack is? Okay, um, a side channel attack is where you are trying to get the system to leak data, but in an indirect manner. And um, Noel Wolf is going to be talking in great detail about this later on this afternoon. Um, the bottom line, though, is 
if you're trying to get the lock to tell you something, you could either do that in a direct way or an indirect way. Now let's have a think about single pin picking. Does somebody want to hazard a guess here? Is that an indirect attack? Is that a side channel attack? Or is that a direct attack? What do we think, guys? Okay, so we're trying to get data out of the actual locking elements, the actual pins, those things there, are the locking elements. They're the thing that we're trying to get data out of, and our pick is in direct contact with that. So that is a direct attack. On the other hand, with a safe lock, everything's indirect. Now, you're going to be seeing this slide a few times, okay? And, and there's quite a lot of lot of data in here, um, but the, uh, the lock can be made to leak data, so these wheels here, these are the code wheels, that's actually where the combination lives, all right, so you can see these gates here, these, these big things here, um, we're looking for the position of those, but quite clearly we can't look in there and see that, you know, so there must be kind of some indirect way to deal with that. And uh, if we think about this, we can see that here's the spindle, so that goes to the outside of the lock, and we've got the dial attached to that, right? So we've got the spindle attached to the cam, here's this cam. The cam contacts the lever, and the lever contacts the wheels. So we can't get in there and look at these things, but we have got a way of connecting ourselves on the outside to these things on the inside. And figuring out how to do that is what opening one of these things is all about. Now, how does it work? Um, is it a big... Oh, I was going to tell you about these. Um, have people seen these NSA... Uh, propaganda pictures, yeah. Um, this goes to what our keynote speaker was saying uh, this morning. Um, the NSA has got a, a PSYOPs department, right, and, and they work on their own staff as well as everybody else. So we heard about the, um, the eyes looking down at you uh, over the top of the dishes and the sink or whatever. Um, and um, a whole lot of these pictures have been released over the last year or so. Um, and these things just give you a fascinating picture of how the Americans were thinking during the Cold War, eh? It, it really is good. Um, and I've got these scattered through the, through the lecture. So, is in fact this thing a big scary bear? Well, actually, kind of, no, it's not. Um, once we break it down, it's a fairly easy, simple kind of a mechanism. And the next three topics, the next three things we're going to talk about, is breaking that mechanism down and telling you how it does its thing. So, every lock, every system, I don't care what it is, has got three stages in, in its operation. First of all, we need to enter the code. So we need to tell the lock something. We need to get data in there somehow. Then, second stage, the lock needs to figure out whether we got it right. So it has got a code authentication stage. The lock has to ask a question and say, OK, did the operator know the thing? Did they tell us the thing? Did they do the thing? Right? So it's got some sort of gadget that does that. And then thirdly, if we entered the code correctly and if the code was authenticated correctly, then finally, the lock is going to move some element. So some, some physical thing will rotate or it will slide like a bolt, whatever. Um, and once we've done that, we've got the, the thing open. Now, if there's three stages, right, then there are obviously going to be weaknesses we can exploit and things that we can do at all of those three stages. There are things that we can kind of make use of, you know. And uh, let's have a think about a five, six pin lock. So we're all, uh, we're all familiar with this. Okay, let's have a think about it. Um, the Yale style lock is a work of genius. It, it really truly is. Okay, it's incredibly simple. And all of these three operations are 
carried out in a very, very easy and compact, I guess is the word I'm looking for, fashion. So you put the key in, that would be the, which step guys? Code entry, yeah, absolutely, okay. You try and turn the key, what's happening there, what stage is that? Absolutely, so did you know the thing? Did you put the right thing in? Do you have the right data to make this happen? And then in that very same movement, we are now accomplish, accomplishing the third step, which is moving the locking element, right? So all those three stages happen in a very, very compact time frame. Now, that is the great genius of the, of the Yale lock, right? But it's also really, really, really its major weakness. So the reason that these things are so easy to open is that there are all sorts of things we can do to exploit this thing. So we can put the data in in a different form to what it's used to, you know. So instead of the key going in, we can stick a pick in there. And we can do things to the code authentication stage. So maybe we can bounce pins out of the way and spoof it like that, you know. So there's lots of different things that we can do to it. Now, with a safe lock, these three stages are kind of separated. So with the five pin lock, the pin tumbler lock, everything happens pretty much in one go, very simple, okay. Um, with the safe though, the code entry stage is a little bit longer and more tedious, you know? So with a standard group two lock, you have to dial it four times to the left, three times to the right, twice to the left again, and then once round to the right to do something. We'll talk about the something in a minute. Um, so, does anybody know why? Let's, um, let's have a think here. Why would you have to turn the dial four times in one direction to get this thing started? Any ideas? Okay, so you're moving something into place, aren't you? How come it's four times? Absolutely. Okay, so this is where it gets cool. Um, now, I'd, I'd really like a show of hands here, folks. Um, just really briefly, can you raise your hands if um, you really know how a, a three-wheel lock works? Just, just quickly. Okay, cool. All right. On the other end of the scale, can you raise your hand if you've got absolutely not the remotest clue? So there's a few. Awesome. Okay, that was what I was hoping for. And then in the middle here, we're going to have a few folks who have a fair idea but aren't that sure. Raise your hands there too, guys. Yeah, so we're pretty much, this is what I'd expect, you know. We've got a few folks who know really how it works, but the bulk of us don't have too many ideas about what's going on inside there. So why don't we demystify it right now? Four times round to the left. Okay, so four somethings need to rotate. Now... Here we've got one cam, one, two, three wheels. Three plus one is <laughs> four, okay. So obviously four wheels of some kind need to rotate. Now, the way that it works, and this is just so gorgeously elegant and simple that you wouldn't believe it, is that on the back of each one of these wheels, be it the cam or the, the code wheels, there's a little drive pin. And on the front of the next little disc here in line, there's a little driven pin, okay? Now I'm just gonna put my mic down for a second because I need to demonstrate how this works. Um, the pins catch each other and drive the lock around, okay? So, just gonna dump this for a minute. Excellent, well done. Okay, can you still hear me? Um, here's our next wheel, okay, and let's use that finger. Um, it's sticking out like that. So, here's our first rotation. Just the drive cam rotates, then it comes round and starts rotating that wheel. Then that goes round and it picks up the next one and the next one. So there's our four rotations. So once we've rotated this four times, we've picked up all of those wheels. Now, 
when we go back the other direction, hey, guess what happens? It just starts all over again. So let's say we've come round once clockwise, we go back the other way, and that drive pin comes round again, and the cycle starts again. Isn't that just so really simple and elegant? You look at it and you think, my God, how do you make all those wheels operate independently? You know, how could you possibly do that? And the answer is so simple. You've just got those little pins driving it. Um, I will show you a video of that shortly. So, what we're doing, we're still entering the code, okay? We dial, come back, um, we dial this one into position, then this one, then that one, and let's say we have now got all the gates lined up, so we've done our code entry stage. Next thing that happens is that the code authentication happens. That happens by the fence, so you're learning some, you're learning some jargon here, you know, you're, you're learning some technical terms. Um, the fence here drops into these aligned gates, so when the gates aren't lined up, you can see that the fence can't drop down. When we've told the lock the thing, once we've given it the code, it then authenticates it with the nose dropping down into the fence. So now we're authenticated and we can move on to the third stage. And the third stage is just so simple that it's cool. Um, if you carry on turning the wheel just a little bit, um, then the bolt will be retracted. So we're turning this way and the lock is opened. Here's our fence. It's pulled it back because of the cam being in there and here's our bolt open. So three, three easy, easy stages. You know, I, I keep on hammering this. Everybody thinks it's complex. It really, really isn't. We enter the code, it authenticates the code and then the... Uh, the blocking mechanism gets moved out of the way. Now, without actually seeing that in action, it's a little bit hard to visualise. So we're going to have a look at a little video here. Just give me two seconds. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to dial this open. I'll maybe stop the video a couple of times. We might go back and have a look at it a, a, a couple of things. But the first thing we're going to do is enter the code. So let's do our four rotations in one direction. First the cam moves. Then it picks up wheel three. Then it picks up wheel two. Then it picks up wheel one and we're going to align that gate under the fence. Yay! Now let's go back the other way. Now you guys that have seen this a million times before, it's kind of ho-hum, right? But when you see this for the first time, isn't that just so elegant? Some folks sat there and thought that it through, you know, and figured that out. I just think that's beautiful. Okay, so that's the second one. Now, just let me stop it. Ah. Right. Did you notice that every now and again um, we go through the code authentication stage? So I'll just come back a little further. Every rotation, the cam at the nose tries to drop into that gate. So we're about to go through a code authentication stage right there. You see that? It tries to drop in, but because we haven't got the right code in there yet, it can't quite do it. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, now we have got the code in there. Let's authenticate it. Here it comes. Yeah, okay, and now all we've got to do is that last stage, so we've got to move that blocking element. Wham, and there it is. I know I use the word elegant a lot when I'm describing this, but isn't that so cool, you know? It's really neat to see. Okay, let me get that off the screen.
You all understanding that so far? Is that kind of making sense? Yeah, I'm seeing not heads nodding A. That's a real good sign. Okay, so let's move on. So all we've got to do to open this lock, all we've really got to figure out, <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing chuckles, eh? Um, all we've got to do is figure out where the gates are. So this is self-evident, okay? Um, if we are going to manipulate this lock open, we need to know where the gates are and we need to put those gates in the right spot. But before we decided that we couldn't actually do it directly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that, eh? I really do. <laughs> um, that's the thing though, right? I mean, you know, the NSA may be listening to you, but um, unfortunately the NSA can't be looking into the safe and neither can we. Um, we can't see those gates. We can't feel them. We can't hear them directly. So there's, there's no direct way of getting to them. So we have to think about side channels. So now we're coming back round to where we started. Okay, we've talked about how it works. Now let's talk about ways of getting some contact. Now this is the slide I said I, I was going to show you guys a few times. Um, we can make this lock leak data. No doubt about it. And again, let's think about what we know. We've got physical connection between the dial and the cam and the cam and the lever with its nose here and the lever with its fence is connecting this. So we have got something indirect that we can work with. So now we start talking about tolerances. So this is where it's starting to get interesting. We know that we've got a way to feel what's going on. Let's think about what we're actually feeling. Now, I don't know about you folks, but um, if anybody ever asks you how you're able to pick a lock or how you're able to open any mechanical system, if you say the word tolerances back to them, you're always going to be right, you know. Um, tolerances are the thing that we, we exploit. And uh, safe locks, they're incredibly well made and they're, very, they're made to very fine tolerances, but they still do have tolerances. So let's have a talk about these wheels. Now, this is one of the three code wheels in the wheel pack, all right? Here it is, lovely looking thing, okay? Um, but I don't really want you to think about it as a, as a wheel, okay? I want you to think about it as a pizza. When you guys think about safe locks from here on in, okay? I want pizzas in your head. Um, <laughs> I'm hearing laughs, you know? Um, that, uh, I had a hell of a lot of fun putting this talk together. Um, that, that is actually a pizza that I bought, right? Um, and cooked. Um, <laughs> the things I do for you, you know? Um, and I took a bite out of it. And I got a cookie cutter and stamped the hole in it. Now, for those of you that um, maybe had too much for lunch and are, and are you know, flagging a little bit, um, shall we maybe make it easy for you and say, um, this is a code wheel, this is a gate, and this is the hole that the spindle goes through. Are we all on the same page? Are we good? Excellent. Okay. Now, um, let's say you're Sergeant in Greenleaf and you make hundreds of thousands, millions of these things, okay? I mean, this is what you do for a living. This is your bread and butter. This is what you do. You sell these things. You are making millions of these units. Now, do you think that every single one of those wheels that comes off the production line is exactly round? I don't know about you, but my pizza wasn't, right? And the next pizza I buy isn't going to be completely round either. As well as that... Do you think they're all exactly the same diameter? So, you know, they're maybe going to be kind of oval and maybe one is 10 inches and one is 10.1 inches in diameter or something. So we've got lots of different size variations, but all within the tolerances, right? So um, they're good, but they're not perfect, okay? And then we've got to get a hole in the centre. Do you think every single hole in every single wheel is going to be in every single exact same central place every time? Because I certainly don't, okay? The army there is just no way it could be. So now let's think about those 
stacked up. Let's put them all together, okay? So we've got our three pizzas, and we stacked them up all together, and they've each got a bite out of them, right? So they could kind of look two different ways maybe when we stack them. So isn't this starting to get interesting, folks? We've got our three wheels. They're all stacked up on a, on a spindle, okay? Um, but when they're all stacked up like that, maybe one of them has got a little bite kind of hanging over the edge. Wouldn't that be a nice thing to know about if we were going to try and manipulate that lock? Wouldn't it be really nice to know where that was? And uh, maybe on the other hand, when they were stacked up, um, they weren't stacked up in such a manner that the bite was kind of visible, if you like. Um, it was, there, there was a bite kind of here, and maybe there's one under here somewhere, or, you know, whatever. Um, but wouldn't it be really nice to know that um, the diameter was slightly smaller here, or there was kind of a bulge there, maybe, you know? So wouldn't it be great if we had some way of indirectly working out that we could figure out the shape of that wheel pack? Wouldn't it be nice to kind of draw ourselves a kind of a picture of that, maybe a, a kind of a map or, or maybe a graph, you know, something like that. So, what do we do about that? Well, it isn't going to tell us, and we can't look into it. So, we'd better figure out a skill, we'd better figure out a way of getting that data out of the lock. So now, we pretty much know how it works, and we pretty much know that there are some tolerances that we can exploit and some things that we can measure. Are we all on the same page on that? Are we good with that? Because if we are, we can move on and, and think about mastering the physical skill. What do you reckon, guys? Is there anything that we need to know? Now's a really good time for questions about how that lock works. Ask me questions. We're all good. We're not asleep because we had too much for lunch. We've all got a good idea of how it works. So we rotate it four times in one direction, three times in it. Right, okay. And we know that the wheels aren't completely round. Right, let's move on. That fence, that thing that goes across and, and does the, uh, the code checking, you know, the authentication stage, it doesn't ride on the wheel pack the whole time now does it so let's have a look at this and I want you to pay real close attention to this area here okay so you can see that the nose of the lever there is riding on the cam it does that most of the time and while it's doing that there is daylight there's a gap there so right at the moment that lock can't let leak any data to us at all. Not a thing, right? There's nothing we can feel on there, okay? Um, so here's our wheel pack here, and it's got all this information in it, and it's got all the stuff that we'd really like out of it. But at the moment, uh, it ain't leaking much. But once every revolution, that lock asks ourselves, have they got it right? Did they know the code? Did they do the thing? And this little nose here, that's called the nose, right? Tries to drop into the cam gate. And at the moment it kind of can't because we haven't entered the code correctly. But at this point, this is in contact with the wheel pack. Now, ain't this starting to get interesting? So once every revolution... We have got contact between the area that's got it, all the data, the stuff that we need to know, and something else in the lock. We've got a physical connection there. We're getting good. We're getting somewhere. We cracked it. We're geniuses. We know how to get it, right? But we can't actually feel the lever, right? 
because the lever ain't connected to us. Here's the fence. Here's the lever. Here's the nose. And there's still kind of daylight between the cam, which is connected to us on the outside. So we thought we had it. Oh, bugger, but we didn't. So there must be something we can do. And it turns out that we can touch the sides, these little points here of the cam gate to the nose of the lever. Those are called the contact points. They are the points at which this makes contact. Kind of makes sense, right? Now, start thinking. This is important, right? When we have got, let's say, one gate aligned here under the fence, don't you think maybe that that might drop just a tiny, tiny bit lower down? Just a tiny bit further down. So it won't be much, you know, we'd be talking about thousandths of an inch. Um, but at this moment, when something is a little bit lower here, um, that fence is going to drop down just a little more. Maybe we can get some data out of that. How could we do that? Well, when it drops down that little bit further, this nose is going to contact this point and this point just slightly further down that V-shape, slightly further down there. Again, not going to be much, not going to be much at all, but maybe there's a way that we can measure that and get something out of it. There's our funnel. The lower that nose goes into that gate, the narrower that gate gets. Are, we, are you with me? Am I making sense? Have I hammered it home enough? Am I getting some nods? Awesome. Okay. All right. So, finally, we've got something that we can measure. Finally, we've got the lock to leak us data of some kind. So, let's think about where we are. We've put the wheels of the lock to a known position. We put them somewhere. We've dialed the cam back to the authentication stage, and that fence, that little part of the lever, has dropped down a certain amount. Now what we can do is find exactly how much play we've got in there, so how far down that funnel we actually are. And we're only talking about fractions of a step on the dial. So we might find that, for example, and I'm making numbers up here, um, most of the time a contact point was one on the dial. But maybe when we had the wheels in a certain position, it dropped down that little bit further and so the contact point was lower, and so the funnel was lower, and so the contact point was less than one. So it was kind of, I don't know, 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 or something. That would give us some data about where those wheels are. So once we've got that, what are we going to do about it? Now let's see if we can get this to play as well. What I'm showing you here is finding a contact point um, and seeing where it is. Give me a second. Where's my cursor, guys? Finally. Okay, so let's watch what happens here, folks. 
we've just put the dial on zero. What we're about to do is dial back and drop that nose into the cam gate. So we're about to enter the authentication stage. So now we want to know where exactly the edges of that funnel are. How far down the funnel are we? And one edge is about there. And one's about there. Let's try it again. Looks like about here. Looks like about there. So what we might do is record those measurements. So we've got a little graph that we're going to come to very shortly. Um, and we're going to get some information out of that. Let's get rid of that. So, as we go round, we're going to get small but definite differences in those contact points. Little things that we can measure. We've made the lock leak this data to us about the shape of the perimeter of that wheel pack. And from here on, folks, it's really, really easy. What we're trying to do here, we're going to build ourselves a map. We're going to build ourselves a graph of the perimeter of our stack of pizzas. And uh, it's, oh, from here, it's pretty much just logic. So let's say what we do. <laughs> it's great when you get to that point, eh? Um, let's say we dial all the wheels of the lock right around four times to the left to a number. Let's say it's zero. We come back round, drop into that contact area, measure the contact points, graph them. Put them on a, put them on a table. We'll see that in a minute. Okay. Then we dial back round to, say, two. So we're going to go on in increments of two, let's say. Right? Um, we've all gone all wheels left to two. We come back to that contact area. We drop in. We measure the width of the funnel. We come back around, we rinse and repeat. And we go around that dial and make ourselves a map of that perimeter. That's what that map might look like. Now, there's a few different ways of doing that, okay? So some people make the, the graph round. I like making it linear like that. That's just the way I think. Um, but what we've got now, guys, We've got data that we can work with. We've got something that we can do. So look at that graph and think about what that's telling you. It's telling us that the perimeter of our wheel pack is maybe a little bit kind of irregular, you know? So mostly it's a kind of a nice, even kind of a circle. But there's a couple of points where there's a kind of a dip here. And in one particular area here, corresponding to 60-something, eight, maybe, whatever, um, there's quite a big dip. So now we've got a graph that shows us, OK, the perimeter of this wheel pack um, is pretty round most of the time, you know. But at one particular area, there's a little kind of a divot, a, a, a little bit of a dip. Um, now, doesn't that look a bit to you like a little bite taken out of a pizza? What do you reckon, guys? Do you think that's what that might mean? So now what we've done, we've made that lock leak the position of that little bite. Now, we don't know which of the wheels it's on yet. So there's three wheels on the lock, right? And it could be any one of them. But um, there are algorithms. There's logical procedures, there's things that we can do to make that lock leak that information to us further. And that, folks, is what the workshop's going to be. So if you're interested, what we're going to do in half an hour's time is play around with that, see if we can make some locks leak some more data to us, and have a bit of fun. I hope you've enjoyed that. What I've tried to do there is really demystify it, okay? I've tried to make it as simple and as obvious 
as it really, really is. Thanks, folks. Okay, now, are we good for questions? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so um, I know what I've done there is presented a whole lot of information in a short time, folks, and um, I did it the way that I did because I knew that if I spent a lot more time doing this, you'd, you'd kind of get bored with it, all right? But I also know that folks are maybe going to want a little bit of clarification on some things. So please ask me anything you want as a result of that, okay? If you want some more clarification, now's a real good time. What do we want to know? Sir? Yes. Is there any a chance that if one's overlapping, you're actually just, you don't, you don't find one of the notches? Absolutely right. Yep. So the, the question was, um, is the perimeter of our pizzas always going to show us a notch? And the answer is definitely positively no. Um, if we go back to, that slide there, that one shows us a notch out in the open. Um, but that one there doesn't have a notch there. So what we might do here is find the area of the wheel pack that was lowest, stick that wheel in a low position, and then go look for another notch. So there's there's logical procedures for that. It's a great question. Sir? Really Absolutely. So the question was, do manufacturers try and game us and um, give us essentially false false gates? Um, and the answer is yes, there are a lot of ways of doing that. So you can uh, make the wheels out around. You can make flat spots on the wheel. You can make extra little gates that aren't quite as deep as they should be. There's, there's a lot of ways of doing that. Yeah. Everything you can think of, they've probably already done, eh? <laughs> what else? Anybody got another one? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so the answer is, um, the question was, can we game the authentication stage of this lock? Can we somehow negate that? And the answer is very definitely yes, we can. Um, if we drill a hole and we drill off the fence, so we go through the front of the safe, we drill a hole, we blast that fence off there, at that point the wheel can... Uh, the the lever can fall into the uh, gate next time it comes around. So, so you, a conceptual design where uh, the gate is not, sorry, sorry, the fence is not ever riding on, on the wheel pack at all until some later stage. Oh yes. Again, that's, um, if you can think of a way of making the lock not leak that particular bit of data, a better quality manufacturer has definitely done that with a better quality lock. Yep, real good question. What else, folks? Any other questions? Okay, cool. So um, we will be playing with a few locks in the lab in a few minutes' time. Um, we've got about a dozen locks that we can play with. Um, we can graph some wheel packs. We can take the back off and we can have a bit of a play. Um, I'd invite you all to come down for that if you're interested. Again, thanks, folks. Uh, we are running a bit ahead of time, so we have about a 10 minute period or so until our next talk is going to begin. Uh, use the spirit just to run to the bathroom, grab another drink, and we'll see you back here in about 10 minutes or so. Thank you. <laughs>